Oh, good morning and happy Tuesday. I'm wearing my Fred LeBeau half marathon hat. Can't promise that I'm going to go out and run in the snow this morning, but I'm at least going to wear my hat in spirit, in the spirit of running. <laughs> Get myself up and moving. Um, I hope that you're all having a beautiful day so far when you read this or hear this rather. And I hope that yesterday you enjoyed um, the day of of being home in your pajamas, <laughs> if that's what happened, or if you had to come to school and trudge through the snow, I hope that that happened for you there and back safely. Okay, um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen so that we could start thinking about what we want to happen on Tuesday. All right, so today it is, uh, here we go, Tuesday, and you're gonna see that there's going to be, when you look at the slide, this might change, but when you look at the, because there might be two, um, but right now there's one partially made slide and what's gonna go into this box is the video that I'm recording right now, all right? Today, Tuesday is going to be using the checklist to publish your piece. You will not publish your piece today. You will only go through the checklist thoroughly, thoroughly. I'm gonna be honest with you. Last week or maybe two weeks ago, a student in one of the classes was actually going through a checklist that I gave without the piece of writing in front of them. And I, I don't know how you're checking to see if you're doing all the things that are on the checklist if you don't have the writing in front of you. So I want to remind you that right now you should have your piece of writing in front of you, the writing that you worked on on Friday and on Monday, so that this is in front of you now with an introduction and the middle and the well-developed conclusion because you worked on that part yesterday that I had you all working on, okay? It is Tuesday. You should have a piece of writing in front of you that is pretty much done and ready to be published, all right? And by published, I mean you're copying it over and making it ready for the world to read. The world meaning you, me, and maybe who else, whoever else wants to read it. All right, so in thinking about what we want you to do, I would like you to pull up the checklist. So when I, you're done watching this video, you're going to click here to pull up the checklist, and there it is. Now, for those of you who have a printer in front of you, print this. It's three pages. For those of you who don't have a printer in front of you, this lives in front of you while you have your piece of writing in front of you, and you're going through the checklist to make sure that you've done all these things. If you are in school today, I will give this to you. If you're not in school today, you are printing it out or you have it in front of you to go through all of these components to make sure that you've done all of the lovely, lovely things that will make your writing next level awesome. Okay, so we are writing an opinion. We are actually writing what's called a literary essay, which is giving your opinion about a piece of writing that you have read, your opinion about a story that you have read. And in our case, we've read so many, but we were only last week choosing one of three stories. We were choosing the, the story by Kevin Hanks, Chrysanthemum, Each Kindness by Jacqueline Woodson, and Those Shoes by Mary Beth Boltz. With this in front of you and your piece of writing in front of you, you're going to go through it and make sure that you have either done it, you're starting to do it, or you actually haven't done it yet. And then today you will persevere to make sure that all of the components that are on this checklist, all three pages are in your, pub, your piece of writing that is ready to, for the world to read, okay? All right, so overall, did you tell your readers what your opinion is? Is it your opinion about chrysanthemum, your, your opinion about those shoes, or your opinion about what people are supposed to learn, or your opinion about a specific character? If you did that on a text, which is what we're doing. I told readers my opinion and ideas on a text and helped them to understand my reasons, then you're getting a big fat yes. Did I do it like a third grader? All right, here's how a third grader does it. They have a lead. Your lead is this. The story of Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks is a story about a girl who's given a very long name. But In the story, readers can see that the classmate Victoria is rude. You have something like that in a paragraph that stands on its own. Okay, the next thing that you're gonna do is connect ideas throughout your piece with transition words and phrases, like for example, and because, and also, and another, and another example of this, similar to this. One way that we see that, another time we see this, and finally we see this, for example, this is because. You're gonna have that. If you've done that a lot, then you're giving yourself a big fat yes. If you did it like once, then you're starting to. If you haven't done it at all, it's a not yes, okay? 
this is the only thing that's ending is this little piece right here. This There should have been a line that stretched across here and there isn't. So I worked on an ending, perhaps a thought or a comment related to my opinion. That's what you did yesterday. Go back to yesterday's lesson if you didn't do this yet, because you should do that before you do anything else. Yesterday's lesson already happened. You should have done that already. So before you do this, you're doing yesterday's lesson. Then throughout your story, you have lots of reasons and examples of why readers should agree with your opinion about Chrysanthemum or about um, Jeremy or about Chloe or whoever you decided to write about, okay? Or whatever you decided to write about. Several sentences about each reason, okay? So like this, one way that we see the Victoria is rude is when da 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 This is important because you can write lots of sentences to prove your ideas. Okay, organizing your piece, you wanna make sure that each part of your writing is mostly about one thing. You probably know that you have a whole paragraph that's mostly about an introduction. You probably have a whole paragraph that's mostly giving your reasons and evidence. And you will probably have a whole paragraph that's just your conclusion. If you have that, you're rocking and rolling, yes. Okay, then your development of this. Only two things to think about. Did you name your reasons? One reason is, or one example of this is, and then you wrote more about each one. If you did that, yes. I not only told readers to believe me, but I also got them thinking about that and feeling about that in certain ways. So it might be that you have reflected on why this is important. You're getting the readers to go, oh yeah, she's right. I feel the same way. Okay. And then the last page, this is your language conventions page. This is where you check your spelling and punctuation. Folks, no more turning in pieces of writing that don't have correct spelled word, correctly spelled words and don't have periods and capitals and commas and quotation marks. This is just not acceptable anymore at this point. So go through this checklist and make sure that you use what you know about spelling patterns, all the work that you've been doing with um, word study in class and also have somebody read it to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Finally, you give some punctuation, your periods, your capitals, your question marks. I'm sorry, your periods, your question marks, your exclamation points. And also maybe you write in ways that help readers read with expression. Maybe some parts are a little slowly written, uh, read, and some parts are read in a little bit of a voice that is a little bit faster. How will you do that? Maybe you'll have a one word sentence thrown in there somewhere, like we talked about last week, All right? In the end, you've done all of this checklist today on Tuesday, tomorrow on Wednesday, no new videos. Tomorrow on Wednesday, you will simply copy over your piece. If you are in cohort A, you're turning this in to me when you come back into school. If you're in cohort B, you are turning this in to me when you come back to school. If you are in cohort D, you're turning this in when Mike tells you he would like for you to have it in. All right. Do your best. That's all you can do. If you are at home today, you've got lots of time to work on this. If you are in school, you have the time that I'm with you to work on this. You'll do your best. I believe in you. I trust you. Happy Tuesday.